I am Dori, I am a teacher of English and today's video is being made in answer to a question I received here on YouTube. It really is a great question because it is a common problem in IELTS reading. I will write down the names because and the name of the person that asked me because I do not want to mispronounce the name. Okay, and I will read the question out of my phone. Uh, okay, I want you to show me the tips to distinguish clearly the choice of false or not given. It's sometimes too ambiguous for me to realize and uh, uh, even when I look at the answer given already by the author, I still don't know why that's a false or not given. Is there anything that can trap you to wrong answers? Please help me to improve uh, that task. Okay, so I am sure that uh, the ones of you that have already started doing practice tests by yourself, I'm sure that you have already come across this problem, this issue. Well, actually there are no uh, rules or tips that can guarantee 100% success on this issue no matter what. The best thing you can do is to actually try to understand the logic of IELTS reading a little bit better if that makes any sense. Well, I will try here in this video to share with you some tips that are based on my teaching experience and they will hopefully help you to solve this problem and understand the difference between a false and not given statement a little bit better. Okay, let's begin. Uh, tip number one, beware of implications. All right, beware of implications. Be very careful of what is implied in the text rather than what is already stated. What do I mean by that? Sometimes a statement is implied all over the text as being true or false, but it is never, never clearly stated. So you assume that it must be false or it must be true, uh, but you cannot find proof for it. It's just all over, you know? So when you cannot find proof for something or um, you cannot be specific about an answer, about something, then be very careful because this might be a non-given, a not given, I'm sorry, statement. So let's look at our example over here. So this is a statement and we read, people that suffer from depression try to attain the same standard of success in their career as people that do not suffer from any psychological disorder. All right? Very good. In the text now, um, all over the text, it is implied that people who suffer from depression do not care at all about the success in their career. It is implied as a notion that they do not care about uh, achieving the same standard of success as non-depressive people. It is implied, but it is never clearly stated. So. There might, uh, may be some people who suffer from psychological disorders, from depression, maybe some of them want to achieve the same standards as non-depressive people, the same standard of success. So, it is not stated at all, clearly. In this case, this statement is a not given statement. Okay? Tip number two, lack of discussion. Usually, when you see a statement uh, that it is not discussed or analyzed enough in the text, as an issue in a paragraph or even half a paragraph, then be very careful because this statement might be not given. In other words, if the focus of the paragraph is somewhere else and um, part of a statement is just, uh, you know, it just mentioned, it's, it is just mentioned by the way, then be very, very careful about that. Okay, for example, let's read this statement over here. Homeschooling is part of a self-study procedure that has more to offer than it is generally known. All right? So, in the text, the notion, the idea of homeschooling is analyzed in a paragraph along with its advantages. But it is never actually stated that it is a part of a self-study procedure. It is never stated. It is uh, the notion of homeschooling is analyzed in the paragraph generally, but this 
parts over here, here it is never, never clearly stated. It could be a pass of a, of a self-study procedure, but the paragraph is analyzing and discussing something else. So this is not given. Uh, the part of uh, that it has more to offer than it is generally known, it may be analyzed in the paragraph in terms of uh, homeschooling's advantages, but this is not. So, this is a not given statement, okay? And this takes us to the next tip. Tip number three, if you cannot see it, well, that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Okay, what do I mean by that? Let's take again the previous example, that homeschooling is part of a self-study procedure that has more to offer than it is generally known. So, the part that homeschooling is part of a self-study procedure, it is never stated in the text, okay? That doesn't mean that this is false, because it may be a part, homeschooling, a part of a self-study procedure. We just don't know it. We're just not given this kind of information. This statement over here would be false only in case that in the text we were told something like, well, homeschooling is thought, is supposed to be a part of self-study procedure, but it is actually not that way because blah, 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 etc, etc, etc. You know what I mean? Similarly, we move on to tip number four, beware of omissions. Pay attention to what is omitted between the text and the statement rather than what they have in common. For example, let's see here this example. Uh, let's just say that in the text says something like that. Having a family makes people feel more secure, blah, 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 etc, 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 yada, yada, yada. And we have this statement over here uh, in the tasks, in the task, and that says having a large family enhances security. So, this statement over here is a not given statement. Why? Because in the text, no one ever mentioned about the size of the family. No one ever talked about a large, a large or a small family making any difference. In the text, the writer just wrote about any family at all uh, makes people feel more secure. He, did, uh, he or she, the writer, didn't say anything about the size of the family that makes a difference, okay? So, in terms of size, we don't know anything. So, this statement is not given. It is tricky, I know, uh, but this, this is the nature of these tasks. They are meant to be tricky and confusing, so you just have to understand uh, a little bit better the logic of IELTS reading, okay? Tip number five, beware of explanations. All parts of a statement must agree or disagree with the text. For example, let's see this uh, statement over here. The population of wild ants increases at such a fast rate because they constantly need new members in the ant community. Okay, so in the text, there is a whole paragraph saying that the population of wild ants is indeed increasing at a very, very fast rate, but they never, the writer never gives a reason for that. The writer never tells us why this happens. Uh, he or she, the writer, just tells us that it happens in a whole paragraph. So, we don't know the reason for it. Uh, it could be because they constantly need new members in the ant community, we just don't know it. So, it is not given. Be very, very careful that uh, all parts of a statement must be true to the text. All parts. If a part is not stated at all, as in this case here, it is not given. If in a, if in a paragraph there was a reason why uh, this population is increasing at such a fast rate, but this reason was different from this reason, then in this case, this statement here would be false. But if we have no reason whatsoever, 
then this statement over here is a not given statement. Okay. Last but not least, tip number six, beware of comparisons. In general, extreme opinions and statements should raise your attention. Uh, so be very careful of that. As we said in a previous example, um, we don't know if the size of a family makes any difference. So similarly, for example, uh, in this statement, bus is the most convenient form of public transformation. Uh, when we see these phrases, the most convenient, the most beautiful, the best, we sh the worst, um, we should pay attention to find information and proof in the text because uh, maybe this is not the case if you see extreme views and opinions like that. So we should find it in the text if it's true, if it's false or maybe not given as uh, the large size of a, of a family. Okay, In the text it is mentioned that buses are used the most but not in terms of convenience. We don't know anything about convenience. In the text, it just says that they are used the most in terms of frequency. So in this case, again, it is not false, it is not true, it is, it is not given because we don't know uh, if that statement is true or false in terms of convenience. We just have information that buses are used the most but in terms of frequency. Okay, is that clear? So, at this point, if you are not frustrated with uh, reading and uh, these kind of tasks, true, false, not given, yes, no, not given, that's a very good sign, uh, that's good for you. If you are frustrated uh, with academic reading and uh, these kind of tasks, fair enough, just please don't take it out on me, <laughs> like uh, most of my students do as if I have invented uh, IELTS. I assure you, I have not. Uh, the best thing you can do is just um, see it like a game, just play with it and try to understand the logic of IELTS and these specific tasks a little bit better. Most mistakes take place when part of a statement is mentioned and it is true, but the other part either is not mentioned at all or is mentioned for uh, another reason. So please uh, pay attention to these kind of statements, okay? Also keep in mind, as we have said in previous videos, that the order of the statements will follow uh, the order of the text. That means that uh, you know when and where you're going to find each statement. The first statement is going to appear, the information of the first statement is going to appear first in the text, the second statement uh, after the first, and so on and so forth. So that really, really helps if you need to find proof about a statement and you can't find it. Again, these tips are out of my teaching experience. They may work, but they may not work for all of you. But just give them a shot and I do hope they will. In any case, just let me know uh, what you think with your comments. Again, if you have any questions, just leave them down below in the comment section on in Facebook and Twitter. I have added all three links down below. And if your question is a common problem, I will make a video out of it. So, thank you very much for watching. Good luck with the exam.